Never easy. Sometimes I think that growing up is like learning how to drive a car. When you're 10, you're kind of like a car that won't start. When you're 13, your car starts, but it turns out to be a clunker. <laughs> When you're 17, it all comes together. You are like a sleek sports car. <laughs> to school. <laughs> to practice. <laughs> to the junior prom. <laughs> Graduation! You are free! <laughs> Master of your fate. <laughs> By now, you're really flying down. <laughs> down that freeway. <laughs> Then the big semi starts screaming by. <laughs> Cars are zigzagging in front of you, and it starts getting dark. And you can't read the signs anymore. And you think you might have missed your exit. And so you try to pull out the map, and you're looking at the mirrors, and all of a sudden it's raining, and you hit this curb, and you're holding the wheel tighter. <laughs> Taking control of our lives is what growing up is all about. But if you want to drive that shiny new sports car, you got to know where you're going and how to get there. From middle school to here, from where you are, how have things changed for you in your life from how you look at things and how you approach things? Yeah. I can remember back in elementary school where like you didn't even care what you put on, you know, you could just throw on anything. <laughs> But then you, you get into junior high and you get into high school, it's like, oh, I can't wear that. It doesn't match, you know? Like, you, know yeah. so you start caring about your appearance more. In elementary school, I wanted to be 17 really bad. And now that I'm 17, I want to be three again. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want. What are some of the new words you have now at 17? Uh, I have a job. I have a boyfriend. I have seven classes. I do a lot of, like, extracurricular activity. I babysit for the people at my church. <laughs> wow. Let's all say that together. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's quite a lot, isn't it? As soon as you step into that junior high, a huge, like, seat belt is taken off you. It's, it's really crazy. Like, you were strapped in K through 6. What do you mean by seat belt? It's not a cushy life anymore. You're uh, not guaranteed. Because when you're in elementary school, that class you're with for that full six hours a day yeah. is your friends. It's your nice little safety cushion. Yes. How have things changed for you guys between boys and girls? <laughs> Tracy? Elementary school, guys are icky, and you're not really thinking about it. What do you mean icky? They just... Elementary school, you're, you're all about you and your, your girl buds. It's all yeah. about girl power in elementary right. school. It's, like, it's about hanging with your girls and sleepovers and that kind of thing. Yeah. That's, that's what you do. Middle school, that's when you're like, oh, guys are starting to look at your relationship with your buds are now, let's talk about so-and-so on the phone, and that's not a confession, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and then in high school, of course, that's when you start actually dating and things start to become a little more serious. I was in the seventh grade, and I met this new girl who was in the eighth grade, yeah. and she had this boyfriend named Theo, and she goes, oh, Theo has such soft hands. And so, like, every night, I would, like, baptize my hands in the ocean. <laughs> In my face, and then I'd come to school, I'm like, hi, Christina, and, like, and she'd be like, hey. How have things changed with your parents now that you're teenagers? Has it gotten harder for you sometimes? Yeah. Corey, what would you say? I can't even talk to my parents about certain things because they don't understand, like, they don't remember how to be right. kids again. I think the reason they disagree is because they don't want to let you go. They're used to this oh. little kid. And they're like, it's comfortable to have that little kid around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, you're changing and you're becoming <laughs> more on your own. And they're like, no, you have to stay home. And they try to make you be that little kid yeah. still. Yeah. 
I don't ever remember being a kid. I live with my grandparents. Yes. And I was living with them since I was like two. And so they were always trying when I was younger for me to be more responsible, be more of an adult. So you were always treated as an yeah. adult. Yeah. And right. now that I'm there, they're like, you know, what happened to my little girl? It's yeah. like I never really was a little girl. You feel like you missed it maybe a little bit? Yeah. All right, Rach. Are there a lot of pressures on you guys nowadays, more pressures than before? Corey, what do you think? Peer pressure to do drugs, to smoke, to have sex. It's peer pressure. All, all kinds of peer you. pressures. It's not easy being a teen. When the teachers get mad, they call your parents. Your parents find out about it. Your parents get upset. Your parents put pressure on you, so it's really hard. A lot of stress on you guys? Yes. yes. <laughs> wow. Rach? I just got a job, which is really difficult because I'm in sports, too. And yesterday, wow. I got done practice at 5.30 and went to work by 6. And I usually don't get home until about 10.30. You start homework at 10.30? Yep. It's so tiring. Is that a typical day for you? Yeah. After like Columbine and after 9-11, we have all these other things that we have to worry about. We have to worry about um, bomb threats like Irvington years ago. Bomb threats every single day. What was it doing to oh, you psychologically? When you're in eighth grade, all you can think when you go to high school is I'm going to die. <laughs> you know? I'm either going to die of some like sexually transmitted disease or I'm going to get shot or I'm going to get blown up. Then you have to worry about classes. <laughs> Do you think adults, parents, teachers, do you think they understand the kind of pressures you guys are under? No. no. Why do you think the parents don't understand the pressures? I think one of the biggest issues is that no matter what your parents think, you are not them. And so you deal with pressure differently than they do right now, especially because like my parents are almost 60 years old and they've been, you know, dealing with the stress in the way that they know they can do it for 40 years and they know how to do it. I'm still 16 and I don't really know how to deal with it completely yet. And I think that they've gotten so in this frame of mind that they can deal with it that they forget I can't. Any of you guys ever felt completely overwhelmed by all the yeah. pressures put on you? Yeah. 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 Corey? I get overwhelmed with everything. I'm just the kind of person who absorbs something and then... Stressed out. Stressed out. Very stressed out. Gray hair stressed out. Yeah. And then hey. I... <laughs> <laughs> And I'll sit there and I'll just cry for hours at yes. a time. And then I'll talk to my mom about it and I'll cry some more and she'll cry with me. And it, it helps to cry. It does, doesn't it? I've had like a couple friends that have felt like, oh my gosh, I can't stand this anymore. Like just everything like we've talked about. Overwhelmed. Like, overwhelming. Like a couple of my friends have even told me like, I don't feel like I could live because there's just so much like that is like, there and I don't know how to deal with it, and whether it's my mom I'm fighting with, right. whether it's my schoolwork, whether it's friends, whether what it's What have you whatever. done to help them? I just told them, I was like, you just have to listen that I'm always here for you. But one time one of my friends overdosed on like a bottle of aspirin and then she told me she wanted to do it again. I was like, no. And I'm like, if it's that serious, you really need to do something. If it's that serious, we need to do something. Yeah. Did you tell I, somebody yeah, then? Yeah, I told someone then. Got you. When we ask for help from other people, we bring resources into our lives that are helpful, not just physically to protect her, but emotionally to help support her so that she doesn't repeat the pattern. You need to know that you did the right thing here by asking for help. How do we get through it with all the pressures of growing up? When those hard times come and we're overwhelmed by all the demands, we have to listen to our feelings let our hearts lead as well as our heads. I was with this little eight-year-old girl, and I said, hey, how do you make friends with somebody who's different? And she said, well, Mike, I had a friend from first grade. She was like hungry in her eyes for somebody to be her friend. And I go, what do you mean hungry in her eyes? And she said, she's deaf. I said, oh, I know, Mike, but okay, like, check it out. In the summer of first grade, I decided to take a course in sign language for four weeks for an hour a day. And now that little girl and I, we're like best friends and we have sleepovers. We talk about our feelings and I love her very much. She is mi corazón, which is the Spanish word for heart. And I said, wow. I go, wasn't that nice of your mom to take you up there every day in the summer? And she goes, well, yeah. Well, it was nice of me to go up there too, you know, Mike. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> I said, what did you learn from learning to do sign language and bring her into the group and talk to her? She goes, 
my, I always listen a lot more with my eyes and my heart than I do with my ears and my brain. We all have heart smarts. We're all emotionally intelligent people. We just have to wake up to it. So how do we do that? We learn the ABCs of emotional intelligence. Assets, balance, and character. We start with assets because we all have strengths and resources. We just need to recognize them and develop them and use them when we need them. Guys, if you'll watch the screen here, we're dealing with a young lady by the name of Sonia who's dealing with a lot of pressures like the ones we were just talking about a little bit earlier in her teen life. Let's see how Sonia is dealing with her pressures. I love being in high school, don't get me wrong, but things are a lot more complicated now than they used to be. Everything matters now, and the pressure for grades is like intense. This semester, I've had to pull a bunch of all-nighters just to keep up. Things with my boyfriend have gotten really awful. We barely see each other anymore. And when we do, it seems like all we ever do is fight. It just isn't fun anymore. And now my good friend Cheryl is completely falling apart because her parents just fight all the time and she's afraid that they might get a divorce. She's doing horrible in school. And I think she might be on some kind of drug because sometimes she's really strange. I keep telling her she's got to get some kind of help, but she won't talk to anybody about this but me. She's over a lot, and sometimes I just can't handle it. My schoolwork is getting totally out of control, and I'm really afraid I could blow it. I know Cheryl doesn't want anyone to know, but we've got to talk to somebody and get some help. What do you think Sonia's going through here emotionally, guys? What do you think she's feeling? Everything's going wrong. Everything is going wrong. Right. Stress. Stress. Confusion. Confusion. What else? There's too much going on. Too much going on all at once. Frustration. Frustration. You think it's a good idea her, for her not to talk to anybody? No. no. Yeah. Why not? You need to talk to people. She needs to talk to someone. Either of them need to talk to someone that they trust. Okay. You know, whether it be another friend right. or, you know, even another family another member. Peer. If she doesn't want to talk to her it's parents. Fine. She can talk to it like an aunt or an uncle or, you know, just someone that she trusts. Do you guys have personal emotional support systems as somebody to talk to in your life? Mm -hmm. yeah. Adam, what's your personal support system? Friends. Friends. They're a big part of my life. Why are friends so important to you, Adam? Because they're always there for you. And most of them are our age and they can relate. My friend Jen, she graduated last year, and every time I, like, I'm upset or something, I just call her, and she knows exactly where I'm coming from, because on New Year's, I got all upset because I had friends over, and people were disrespecting me, and I got upset, and she's like, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, I'll handle it, and she just helped me out, and, like, anytime I had problems with my mom or schoolwork or anything, she's like, don't worry, I'm there for you. She's part of that support system. Good. So many people feel alone and that they don't have anyone. It's not, you know, you look around and there's always people willing to help you. That are there for you. Yeah, great Adam. I think my best support system is my parents because they're the ones who know me best. Have you ever had a time where you were doing, maybe spending too much time trying to take care of your friends and not doing enough? Mm -hmm. And my parents are, you know, just saying, you know, you have to worry about you, you know, for college and yeah. for other things. They reached out to you and helped you. They were the voice that, you know, from myself that, you know, they knew what was right. And you know, even though I couldn't think of it, you know, they know me best and so they know. Yes. You think that voice is going to be in your brain now because they've been helping you for life? Uh-huh. They, yeah. I mean, they've taught me to, you know, think of it myself instead yes. of just relying on them. My mom died when I was in the, uh, in the eighth grade. And I moved here not knowing anyone. And I hopped in the game like immediately, you know. I made friends, I joined But the you all the time, band. Zamar, you were hurting. Yeah, and I have a gift of just being strong. I know that I can bear through anything. Well, what sort of things did you tell yourself in this period of time? Uh, I can do it, you know. Yes. Uh, I, I can do it, I can achieve it, you know. And just keep it, keep, just keep your eyes on the prize. Yes. Sometimes in the morning I would talk out loud uh, uh, to myself and say, okay, Zamar, it's Monday morning, have a great day, and I'm out of there, you know? Just, you have to reassure yourself and invest in yourself, too, you know? Sounds like your mother's still helping you. Yeah. Uh, my mom taught me so much. What would you say to all the parents out there? Invest about? in your children. Prepare them, equip them for everything possible. What know? would you say to kids? 
Learn everything that you can learn from your parents. You know, don't ever take anything for granted because you never know when the life skill that they're trying to teach you ahead of time may come in, in, in handy. What are the internal assets that Sonia needs to look for to deal with all these problems? She has to realize that everything, all her problems are the here and now, and she has to look ahead and like plan accordingly. Perspective. Yeah. For me, it's brainstorming. You have to keep options open, make options for yourself. To solve your problems, you can pick, you know, like, oh, I can do this or I can do that. That's what helps for me. Maybe we can like deal with one problem at a time and so it doesn't all bottle up. Start to look at it as an individual problem with each one. Very good, yeah. I think that a lot of people just forget to relax and they go every single day with constant stress on their mind. And that's especially too much for teenagers. A lot of us are still growing. We yeah. still don't know who we are. And right. we can't have that kind of stress in our life right now. Yes. Let's take a look at how Sonia is dealing with it now. The only person Cheryl let me talk to about this was my boyfriend, David. He says that I'm letting her take over my life and I have to stay more focused on school. Look, he said, I know you and I know how much work you've put into your grades. You can't let this thing with Cheryl's parents threaten all you've been working for. Today couldn't be any worse. This is the first Saturday I've had free since forever. So David got us tickets to see Jennifer Lopez. Our history midterm is next week. I have a ton of studying to do and my first SAT prep classes this afternoon. As I'm getting ready to leave for the class, the phone rings. It's Cheryl. Her dad just moved out, and she needed to come right over. I told her about the class, so she says, OK, tonight then. Then I tell her about the concert, and I can hear her starting to cry. So I tell her I'll try to work things out, and I'll call her when I get back. So here I am, sitting at the phone, trying to decide who to call, David or Cheryl and thinking what I really should do is just stay home and study. Or maybe just get a minute or two to myself to, you know, relax. And have you guys ever been in a time in your life when you were pulled in three di different directions all at once like that? You don't know what to do. You don't know if you want to call off your boyfriend or your family event or your friend and just yeah. spend time with yourself. You're pulled in all different ways. What does it do to you emotionally when you have that going on? You're torn. Yeah. I think she has to take a minute to like, get herself together, take a deep breath and just relax a little bit because she seems really stressed out because yeah. you know, she's got all these things going on. Oh well, yeah. She said pulling her all different directions. Take a minute to relax and decide what she thinks would be best for her friend, for her boyfriend, for herself. What does it do for her to get a little bit of distance from it and take some time? It clears her mind out, you know. Yeah. What should Sonia you do? I think she should kind of compromise. I mean, if her boyfriend really could understand, then, you know, forget the boyfriend. Take her friend to Jennifer Lopez or whatever, you know? <laughs> Any guy who's willing to go see two hours of Jennifer Lopez really <laughs> loves you because... <laughs> <laughs> All right. She needs to just take one day off and just relax, and that's what that concert needs to do for her. If my best friend in the whole wide world is going through something like that, then I can't concentrate on myself. I can't concentrate on what's good for me until I know that she is having some peace with herself. So what would you do in this situation? How would you handle this? I would tell her, you're my best friend, and we both need some separate time. But I want to help you. And the only way that I can help you is if you let someone else help you, too. How do you learn to balance these things out? It's hard. That is no. hard. Hang on. It's that. I think time management would help. But it's more of a... Emotional. Yeah. It's deeper than that. My friend was going through a divorce okay. with her parents. And it was hard. Like I set half my day towards schoolwork and half my day towards friends. And just sat there with her and let her cry. And I listened to her. And then afterwards, we just went out for dinner. So you found a personal balance for you. You set up a time frame that you could give to both things. What did that do for you to set that aside before you started? Um, that let me think about what I was going to do. Let me think about myself. Let me think about how I handled it. Yes, what your needs were and what her needs were. And you met them both. Very good. Have any of you guys ever been at a time where you had to balance your academic stuff with your friendships and relationships? My brothers and all of them was here last year. And I wanted to do everything with them, but... I wasn't doing academical stuff. I wasn't paying them mind. I always wanted to be with the seniors. Always wanted to be with the seniors. Right. Do this and do that. And actually, I was failing. I had to separate myself from them. Why was it important to separate yourself from that? 
because they was going on, but I wasn't. What did you learn from the experience and how did you learn to balance it out? I learned that uh, it's gonna come a time when you can party. It's gonna come a time when you gotta do what you gotta do. And when you get done, trust me, you're gonna have all the party time you want, right. like after high school. Yeah. Tiffany? I think everyone just needs to learn how to prioritize and just make wow. a list of what's most important, what's wow. least important. It just helps me to stay organized, stay put, stay balanced and have some time for me. A lot of times, I need, especially on the weekends, is when I have the time for myself to kind of Why is recuperate. it important to reward ourselves in the teen years? Otherwise, I'll go crazy. I just, yeah. I mean, so much stuff, I can't handle all of it. And so I need time just to, you know, be by myself or, you know, go out with my friends and have fun and just relax. What does it do and for you? It, you know, brings me back to, like, being the sharp, you know, being where I need to be, yes. you know, just. Being on point. Yeah, right. right. Just being on point. Life is all about choices. The thing about choices is we can always make bad ones. I met a lot of kids who made bad choices when I worked at Juvenile Hall. One day, this big Samoan kid comes into my office, and I confront him. I go, Eddie, you tore an antenna off a cop car. I didn't know that it was illegal, Mike. I go, what? You didn't know that it was illegal to tear an antenna off a cop car? No. I go, well, ignorance of the law is not an excuse. And he goes, I know that too, Mike, but it's better than no alibi at all. We learn a lot about character during hard times. The teachers of Columbine taught us a lot about character. And the same goes for the firefighters and paramedics of 9-11. Most of us will never be called upon to make those sacrifices, but we can still learn from their example. And the most true thing that we can learn is that character means being able to step up and do the right thing, even when it's the hard thing to do. Let's take a look at how Sonia is dealing with it now. Cheryl came over today, and we spent the whole afternoon talking. She seemed a lot calmer and a whole lot less freaked out. Then she pulls out this bottle of pills, prescription pills, and she pops one. I grab the bottle and I see it's something called Vicodin, and there's no prescription label on it at all. I ask her what's up and she says that they're painkillers and she's been on them for a while. I tell her she's crazy. She could really hurt herself, but she just looks at me and she says, don't trash the only thing that's working for me in my life. You can't tell anybody. Really, I mean it. What's going on now? Cheryl's just like trying to push her emotions out with the drugs. She's just trying to hide it, but she yeah. really wants help. What should someone you do to help her friend Cheryl? Mm -hmm. Who should she go talk to? Who would be a good choice? I think though? a counselor would be a, counselor. a good choice. Because Somebody who knows drugs and alcohol. Yeah. She doesn't want to get her like put in jail because that right. wouldn't really help her life. But I mean, she wants help, so yeah. she's going to her friend. A lot of times, our friends will come to us for this kind of help. But isn't it hard to go to an adult sometimes? Yeah. 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 How do you get past that? How do you do that? I think Sonia should talk to Cheryl's parents about their divorce and tell her that she's been really upset lately about it. Maybe they should sit down and talk to her. And help her out. Should she tell them about the drugs? I don't, I don't know. I wouldn't know what to do in that situation necessarily. I, I don't think I'd go and tell my friend's parents. If you have a friend who's going to do something, okay, and this is just about drugs, how many of you are going to tell your parents or somebody else, being honest, that they're using? How many of you are going to tell, and how many of you are not? You might not tell on her? Uh, I don't know, like... Uh... Being real. It's kind of hard to say because you ha you know, like certain people better, you know, like you can deal with them a different way besides writing ratting them out. Because if you if you tell someone and like that that you make a big deal out of it and stuff, and like they talk to a counselor and stuff, or they like bring you to a therapist, that's putting even more pressure on them. It's no, because I I'm totally sure. Totally disagree with you. If you're loyal to your friend, you're gonna tell. It depends, because like friends are like the biggest part of your life, and if you can tell, if, like if you can help a friend on your own and keep the loyalty then you don't need to but go that's to putting if a lot of stuff so on you yeah but nick he was talking about you have to know, you have to know your friend it, it's different who's your no, friend. you break that confidence if somebody understands him and talks to him and breaks his problem down and you know makes him feel like it's not such a big deal it's only a small part of his life that's how 
that person can get over it. It just, it just depends. Yeah, like, because I had a cousin who just started off with small drugs, and I should have told somebody, but I didn't tell anybody. It's like now I don't, I don't know him. Any of you guys helped out a friend in a very desperate uh, time when you really helped out a friend that really needed you? Well, right now my friend's going through something and she doesn't want to tell anybody. It's like problems with her boyfriend. Yes. He's abusing her. Now it's like physical, physical abuse and she will not tell anybody about it. And I'm like, listen, you have to. I get so upset that she won't so say anything So you're dealing with the exact anybody. same thing yeah. that's going on here? Yeah. So How are you dealing with it? As much as I want to say something to someone, I don't know what to say. Like, I don't want her to get mad at me. Even if she were to get mad at you, you know, she can only be mad for so long. You know, I've helped friends and they've gotten mad at me and I haven't spoken to them for, you know, a month or two. But eventually they'll come around and realize that it, it really well, was help. Yeah. But you need to know to take that step to make sure that she gets that help. Yeah, me and two of my friends went down the, uh, the guidance office yesterday. Okay. And we didn't really mention what it was about, but okay. we told one of the guidance counselors that, like, her, all we said was her wrist is broken. Right. I actually had a friend yes. who got really depressed and started doing drugs. Uh, his dad was in the Army. And his dad uh, also held guns in the house, too. And he told me he was suicidal, and he actually tried once. And I was like, I can't Freaked do it. Out. Yeah, so I told my parents. Yes. And then my mom's like, I have to call them. So she called my friend's parents, right. and then they got him help. You made a good choice. Yeah. Because immediately go to the adult to get that help, because your mother immediately knew what to do. She mm -hmm. called them. You get help. That's what you do, guys. I actually lost a friend because I told someone else. Can you tell us what happened? She wanted to commit suicide too, this whole suicide thing. And I went and I told my parents and my mom told me to tell someone else. Was there ever a moment that you thought, I shouldn't tell? Yeah, there are a lot of those moments actually, a lot. And How do you get past that? I just like, I had to brainstorm and give myself like the just decisions and weigh it out, you know? What were you saying to yourself? I was like, should I tell or shouldn't I tell? And I knew that if I told, like, she would take it really hard because she's like that. And I knew that she would probably not be my friend, but that's, like, the chance that I took. That was a hard choice to make, wasn't it? Was, it was, but you know what? It ended up helping her in the long run, and I see that. You lost that deep connection. Yeah, exactly. But can I say something to you? Uh-huh. Still a good choice. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Assets, balance, and character. The ABCs of emotional intelligence. We need to build the kind of communities in our schools and in our lives where we value the whole person, not just the brain, not just the achievement, but the caring, the love, and connection as well. And when you do that, you are at your best at taking the steps, the life steps, to become the person you most truly want to be. You guys have been a great audience. Thank you for being here.